Good morning. I, uh, I too would like to thank Kirsten Stevens and the Honourable Dennis Bevington for inviting me to attend uh, this uh, session today. I'd also like to say uh, hello to some of my uh, union colleagues who at one point sat across the table from me when I was at Transport Canada. And it's interesting to be on the same side this time. Um, it's amazing how that happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see a big I told you so. Uh, from <laughs> <laughs> um, my experience, uh, I should say at the outset that I'm not an expert in aviation safety. However, I was the, uh, the former Chief of Aviation Security Regulations and the Chief of Marine Security Regulations at Transport Canada for several years. So uh, I am experienced in regulatory development and in the culture at Transport Canada. In a previous incarnation, I was an officer in the Canadian Navy. Uh, safety management systems is, in theory, a form of uh, performance-based regulations. These are intended to give industry choice and methods used to achieve the goals and the regulations. In this case, to prevent crashes and incidents and save lives. However, in order to work, such regulations require preconditions, which were outlined by my colleague, Haiyan. Uh, I agree with the assessment that SMS do not satisfactorily meet the essential criteria in particular with respect to transpar transparency and the need to protect whistleblowers. I believe, further, having witnessed the culture at Transport Canada and knowing the reprisals Hugh Danforth, a former Transport Canada Aviation Safety Inspector, faced for speaking out on Transport Canada's failure to provide proper oversight to due diligence and its falsification of documents, I believe that this is Based on this, I believe that the omission of protection for whistleblowers was probably deliberate, and that Transport Canada is hostile to both transparency and whistleblowing, or ethical dissent, or truth-telling, or any other name one cares to give to people who choose to remember their obligations to Canadians and exercise free speech in the public interest. Interestingly, the, the reason usually given for suppressing with Transport Canada is the undermining of public confidence, that is to say, that if people speak truthfully about problems within Transport Canada or the industry as a whole, it will undermine the public's confidence in the air transport industry. And that is the ultimate goal, apparently, is to, you know, to maintain the confidence. Hugh Danford, who dares to keep his mind, at one point, uh, well, his career has essentially been, essentially been destroyed. I, too, am under attack by Transport Canada for speaking out on mismanagement and the marine security file. As I remember, uh, remain a member of the public service, rest assured that my speaking at this event will neither go unnoticed or unpunished. My point is that I cannot believe that Transport Canada, which is itself does not tolerate dissent on vital issues of public safety and security, can su successfully lead a new and untested initiative in which it expects a completely different code of conduct from the airline industry. Simply put, without whistleblowing protection, airline operations personnel will be risking their career should they refuse a request to cut corners. This is not a hypothetical. It has already happened. Understandably, many employees will decline to speak out in such circumstances. This will put lives at risk. Again, this is not a hypothetical. It has already happened. I have also witnessed an inappropriately cozy relationship between Transport Canada and industry executives in my work. This has been uh, already mentioned by Phil Benson. Um, this includes everything from personal friendships, lavish meals bought, and uh, rumors of cruise ship packages, things like that. It is hard for me to believe that it will be different in the aviation safety side, given that many of the players are the same. For more evidence, one has only to look at the recent incident in which the Minister of Transport had to publicly order his inspectors not to sign confidentiality agreements which airline operators were requesting. That such requests were actually accommodated, that an airline would set conditions for the, uh, for the government agency regulating it to inspect, 
seriously undermines the authority of the government and the department, and I would argue could only have happened in an environment where airline operators feel that they are in the driver's seat. So it seems that Transport Canada is prepared to make a leap of faith. They appear to expect airline operators to be compliant and that their inspectors will be able to detect a safety culture from a few interviews, an examination of documents, and uh, the rare inspection, the actual rare audits. This is at least what I gather from their website. There has been no actual risk assessment of SMS itself. The, 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 the idea is dismissed on, dismissed on their website as superfluous. This kind of contempt for something that is actually, which they admit themselves is essential to SMS itself, does not inspire confidence. And there appears to be no way to test the system used by any individual airline. No standards set by Transport Canada itself to make sure that they are getting enough incidents, except as was mentioned earlier by accidents and body counts. Considering all these issues, and remembering that food safety was uh, managed in a similar manner to the 2000, uh, prior to the 2008 listeriosis outbreak, I don't think it's an exaggeration to call SMS a disaster in the making. So, in closing, I would like to implore the Minister of Transport were he or, or any of his representatives here, which again is a bit disturbing, to take a hard, long, a long hard look at his management cadre and the culture that they have fostered, to speak to his own inspectors in an open forum and to invite families of victims to his office. I ask him to take the regulatory process back to its starting point, to follow Treasury bo Board policy on, on regulatory development this time, and to not simply plow ahead on a regulatory initiative without conducting the proper reviews, consultations, etc. Bring more people into consultations, listen to them, and monitor industry carefully and demand better. Only then, when the risks have been weighed, his inspectors beefed up both in training and in numbers, and all other concerns addressed, should he consider relaunching SMS, and only then with the fully compliant airlines. Thank you. <laughs>